Hey everyone, it's Jess and James here, founder of the Business and Marketing School, multi-award winning international speaker and investor. Now, if you're watching this video right now, perhaps you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or someone who would like to start their own business. Now, in this video, I am literally going to go over some questions that I've received from my clients, some of my followers online, and I'm, I'm literally gonna pick these questions out and answer them for these people. However, these are questions that are going to serve you, the viewer, as well. So if you're in business, marketing, sales, you want to learn more about psychology, how your mind works, how you can help influence people, how you can get your mojo back, all of these things are going to be covered in these questions because I've got some amazing questions that have come up from some of my followers and clients and I want to share the answers with every single one of you so that all of you can gain some insights from this. So I'm going to get straight into it. So question number one is from Nisha. Nisha says, um, how could she get back her coaching career after being in a period of absence after three years and then building people's trust again? Well, look, simple answer to that. It's very straightforward. Here's the answer to it. What you need to do is go back and start doing what you did in the first place. Irrespective of whether you've been out of the picture or out of the loop or off the scene, as it were, for the last three years, it doesn't matter because clearly you had your reasons for that. Now, here's a tip for everybody. This is not just for you, Nisha. It's for everybody watching. People only stop being successful when they stop doing the things that made them successful in the first place. And a lot of the times people do something and they get some results from it and then for whatever reason, whether it's personal or professional, they stop doing it and it falls apart. And then they come and ask people like myself, like, how do I get back on track? Well, the simple solution is go back and do what you were doing in the first place because it clearly worked back then. And then you stopped it for your own reasons. So what you've got to do is go back and look at what were you doing before? So the simple answer could be, what were you doing before? Were you adding value to social media platforms? Were you going out there networking with the right people? Were you out there serving people and building that momentum? I'm very sure before you got your first ever client, you were doing some things that led you to getting that client in the first place. So what I would suggest to you is go back to what you were doing before, and so what if it takes you another three, four, five, six months to rebuild that trust? It's better than doing nothing. Because at the end of the day, clearly you have a calling and you have a, a mission and you want to go out and serve and coach and mentor people. Well, perhaps you need to go back to the drawing board or go back to what you were doing before, should I say, and just start working that muscle again because it's all about muscle memory, especially when it comes to coaching and training other people. You clearly know what you're doing. So I would say, Nisha, go and do what you were already doing in the first place and just start to build it up. You've got to start somewhere, right? So, and, and another thing on that, and this is relevant for everybody, Sometimes we, we, we compare ourselves to previous success, like we compare ourselves to things that we've done before and, and then we beat ourselves up because we're not in that position at the moment because something stopped, right? Well, you comparing yourself to how you used to be and how you are right now is a surefire way to mess your mind up. And I'm telling you now, all you need to do is delete the fact that you used to be like this and focus on actually becoming like that again. Don't worry about what you used to be. What do you want to do now? So start focusing on what you should be doing now to become that person again. That's all you need to do, okay? Um, next question from Kathleen. How can I keep my vision alive, real and colorful, in spite of no expected results? Now, um, I'm, I'm interpreting that question as, how do you stay driven? How do you stay motivated? How do you keep your mojo alive when perhaps you're not getting the desired results that you're looking for at the moment? Well, here's the thing. In business, persistence is key. See, so many people, they give up, like they give up too soon and they, 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 you know, they're really good at what they do. They've got a great message. And, and Kathleen, I know you, I know you've got a great message and I know you want to serve other people. And, and the, the thing is, if you are giving up too soon, because you, 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 know, you, you could be like, literally, you could be comparing the time frame uh, in an unrealistic fashion. For, for, for example, maybe you've been doing this for six months. Maybe you've been doing it for three months. Maybe you've been doing it for a year. I, I don't know. Well, perhaps you either haven't given it enough time or maybe you're doing the wrong things. So one of the things I'd really ask you to look at is what have you really been doing to get the results that you're looking for? What are the kind of things that you've been doing? Because if they haven't been working, what does that suggest to you? It suggests to you that you need to change your strategy. Never change your goal, never change your outcome, always change your strategy if you're not achieving the goal that you're looking for. Because clearly you've set yourself a goal or a target or something to achieve, and if you haven't, 
then maybe that's why you're not hitting it. Because people do this a lot. People will say, I, I want to get more sales. Well, what does more sales mean? Because that could mean like selling something for like one dollar or one pound and congratulations, you've achieved your outcome, right? That's, that's not specific. So what's your specific result that you're looking for? Are you looking to onboard 10 new clients? Are you looking to start your first event? Are you looking to, 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 to I don't know, um, get 10 more, 10 more people enrolled in whatever it is that you're, you're offering? Like literally be specific and work towards that target, right? Because if you're just saying, I just want results, what does that mean? It's got, it's got to be very, very specific. So listen, have a look at what you're doing at the moment. And ask yourself, are these the right things? Because if they haven't been working before, you just need to change your strategy and get some advice around that. I'd also ask you to think about what's going on in your head at the moment. Are you coming from a place of need and desperation or scarcity? Because if you are, then clearly that's going to repel people rather than attract them. So come from a place of abundance. Be very, very clear on what the, ex the exact result you're looking for and you will get there. You will ultimately get there, okay? So great question and I hope that answered it. Now, who's next? Adele. <laughs> Spinning too many plates and not feeling like you're moving fast enough. Now, if you're watching this video right now, maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you're doing all these things like you're, you're trying to set your business up, you're, you're, you're meeting people, you're going to networking events, you're trying to raise investment, you're doing social media, do, you're, you're trying to do too many things at once and nothing seems to be working. Well, that's the problem. The many of us focus on the wrong thing. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, obviously there's lots of debates around this about multitasking and doing multiple things. Like, you can never do one thing in a great way, like, like uh, too, many, too many things should I say in a great way. You've got to focus on one thing at a time. Now, many of you might not know this. I only found it out recently myself. But did you know the word priorities, the plural of priority, the priorities, didn't exist until 1949? Did you know that? Like literally, the word priorities didn't exist before until 1949. Because prior to that, the true definition of a priority was a singular thing. It's a singular one thing. Like, well, what's the one thing that you need to do in order to move forwards? So I would say, Adele, is, is look very, very closely at all of the things that you're spinning at the moment, because this analogy of spinning plates creates a picture in your head of spinning stuff, and then it spins your mind out of control. I would say, take a look at all of the things that you're doing at the moment. And like I just said to Kat, what's the result you're looking for? Is it you're looking to get more clients? Because if you're looking to get more clients, there's only one thing you need to be doing and that is having more sales conversations with people. And just focus your efforts on that. Like focus your efforts on nurturing these leads and having sensible sales conversations with them. So take a good look at the list of things that you're doing at the moment, knock off all the things that are not important and focus on the one thing that's gonna bring you the biggest result in, and move you forward. Because then, then things will start to fall into place because what, if, if it's a, it sounds to me as well that you could do with some help because you've got lots of things going on. And it sounds that perhaps you might be doing too much yourself. Now, if you're not in a position financially to hire help from anybody else, well, guess what? What if you brought some more sales into your business? Wouldn't that help you now pay to outsource some of this stuff to other people? I reckon it would. So, so take a good stock of, uh, of where you are right now, all the things that you're spinning, as you said, and get rid of the things that you don't need to be doing and focus on the one thing that's gonna bring you the biggest result in your business. So hope that was useful. Uh, next question's from Kevin D'Souza. Um, hiring your first employee, VA, part-time PA, uh, when your business is not binary, but completely organic and changes every day. Um, so, okay, um, this is quite a long question, but I'm just gonna summarize it. So, um, if I'm reading this correctly, Kevin, you, uh, and I think I know what you mean because I've been there and I'm sure lots of people um, watching this right now have been there too. Maybe you wanna get some help. You want someone to be like an assistant to you However, you don't have a steady stream of work to give them. It's a bit ad hoc, it's a bit all over the place. Uh, because look, most entrepreneurs, um, and I still do this a lot, I, I, I come up with stuff uh, and I want it done now. Uh, and don't ask me what you need to be doing two weeks from now, I'll tell you what to do today and you go and do it, right? Well, if that's your need, listen to it. If that's your need, if you need someone just to be there with you to have a reactive workload as it were. So like, let's say you wake up one morning, and you go, right, I need this, this, and this done, so I'm gonna outsource that off to my VA. And, and then during the day, something else pops up, and you go, crap, I need some help with that, 
okay, I'm gonna pass it on to my VA, I'm gonna tell them to stop what they're doing and work on this only, then that's so be it. There are people out there that are very happy to work for you in that capacity. Like I have VAs who work for me on that basis, as in like they, they, they start in the morning and they, they, they have a rough idea of some of the things they should be working on for that day, but then I give them a list of things that I want done for that day in particular, because sometimes I'm not planning ahead. Look, like this whole thing about planning and mapping stuff out, it's not, it's not for everyone. Like if, if, like, don't get me wrong, I don't want you to be a reactive entrepreneur. You've gotta be looking ahead, clearly. But, but if there's things like every day, things come up every day as a business owner, we, we get wacky ideas, we get these things that we wanna do and stuff, stuff comes up where we need to firefight and all this kind of stuff. Like, if that's the way you operate, then, then go with that. Like, I, like, as long as you get the end result, it doesn't really matter how you operate, right? So, so people focus a lot on being more organized and more disciplined and all that kind of stuff. And that's great if it works for you. For me, it's not always the best strategy. So I would definitely hire a virtual assistant. Um, and what I would say is reach out to me. Um, I, I've got some contacts that I could put you in touch with to get you some help with that and make sure you hire the right person. Um, they, have, they, they will do all the interviewing for you and all that kind of stuff. And it's very, very cost effective. So, so reach out to me and I'll get you some help with that. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. But my advice, do it, do it. Stop juggling all these things yourself, okay? Um, and next question. Jared, Jared, Jared actually, all the way from the USA, right? Um, failing and losing the motivation to pick yourself up and, and to do what you already once did. Now, Jared didn't mind me sharing this. He actually wanted me to share, share this. Um, I, I know this man, he's got a big heart, beautiful soul. And he, he lost, check this out. Jared lost over 160 pounds, over 160 pounds. Um, he was able to get super motivated. He ended up running a half marathon. That's like phenomenal, phenomenal achievement. But then he said, after accomplishing that goal, he got a bit bored and depression kicked in. And it messed with his head to get back in the game. Uh, and then he wanted to, you know, he, he started putting some more weight on. And, and at the moment, Jared, I think um, if I'm reading this correctly, you want to, you want to get back to that state. You wanna go back to that, that mojo you had to get you going. Well, here's my tip for you, here's my advice for you. Dig deep and ask yourself, what did you do it for in the first place? Like, what was your primary driver behind wanting to lose all of that weight in the first place? Now, my guess is there were some health issues. My guess is perhaps you, you knew you were actually shortening your lifespan if you continued living like that. So, I'm just gonna be upfront and real, real with you, brother. If you are in a situation right now where there are people around you that you care about, such as your partner, your wife, uh, your kids, parents, whoever, if there are some important people around you right now, I want you to ask yourself, if you carry on living the way you're living at the moment, how much time do you have left with them on this earth? And that's a real deep question, but I'm, I'm trying to shift you here. Because at the end of the day, people tend to move more because of pain rather than pleasure. Because at the end of the day, you had immense pleasure from running that marathon. You had immense pleasure from losing all of that weight. I get that. However, it's worn off and that's normal, right? But when we're in the shit, as it were, when things are going wrong, we tend to want to move away from that. So I want you to create something more intense in your head around your situation right now. Like seriously, like if you don't lose this weight, Here's what's gonna happen. You are increasing your risk of heart disease, as you know. I know you've already had some problems with your heart. You're already you're putting yourself in like at risk of diabetes and cholesterol and all these kind of things. And at the end of the day, forget about you. People sometimes do things for other people rather than themselves. So I'm gonna advise you to do it for somebody else. Who do you love right now? And I want you to imagine for a moment that you're taken away from them. What impact would that have on their lives? How much would they suffer because you're not here? So dig deep now, my friend, and ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth, because of this depression, depression or, or whatever you wanna call it, like, is it worth staying down there? Because listen, my friend, depression, and take it from me, I'm an ex-mental health nurse, I know what I'm talking about with this. Depression is a state of mind, it's a choice. It's a state of mind. People will talk about all these chemical imbalances and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff and pump you full of drugs, and especially in the States, right? I mean, they've got like one of the highest rates of prescription uh, antidepressants, right? Or, and over-the-counter stuff as well. You don't need this stuff, dude. 
Like you've done it before and you could do it again. It's a state of mind. Like, like you can be in pain, but suffering is a choice, right? So, so you choose, what do you wanna do? You wanna carry on running this pattern as you're running it right now? Or, and, and face other people in your life losing you? Or are you ready to step up and make a better choice? Because look, it doesn't matter how deep you've gone, my friend. The journey starts with you taking a step forwards. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you. Don't compare yourself to what you did before. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. Even if it takes you like, um, you know, I don't know, like six months, 12 months, it doesn't matter. You've got to start. And trust me, imagine how great it will feel when you get started. Because look, your brain works according to how you associate to things, not according to logic. Logic at the moment is probably telling, oh gosh, it's gonna take ages. Um, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And then that picture puts you off from doing it. So my advice is actually to forget all about how hard it's going to be and ask yourself how great is it going to be once it's done and hopefully that will shift your state and shift how you feel and then get this done. Because you can do it, my friend, you've done it before and I know you can do it again because there's people around you right now that need you to be there. In fact, you need you to be there, my friend. So go out there and crush it, all right? Hope that question uh, was answered and it serves you, okay? Um, had a question from uh, Farah. Trying to learn how to help my 10-year-old son to stand up to a bully who also happens to be his best friend. Well, first and foremost, no child should have to go through that stuff. Like I, I went through bullying when I was in school um, and then I decided to do something about it and I stepped up. Um, and I'm not saying the way I handled it was the best way to handle it for everybody else, but hey, um, I grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood. You had to stand up, stand on your own two feet. Um, so well, it shouldn't be happening and it's not cool. And let me just explain something. Someone bullying your son and calling themselves a best friend is not a friend at all, period, full stop. So what we need to look at is, is it's very easy for when, when, when people are being bullied to focus on the bully or the person doing the bullying. Focus on yourself. My advice to you, my dear, is to work with your son on themselves. Help them to become a better version of themselves. They're, not too, they're 10 years old. They're not too young to start doing some personal development. Get them to, to see what's the good in this situation. Get them to understand their own self-worth, their own, like how great they are. Get them to, to recall times when they've had wins in their life. What successes? Have they won a race at school? Have they won medals? Have they won badges? Were they really cool at sports day? Have they had some great achievements in their life? Like get them to start thinking about all of these things so that they can tell themselves how great they are. Because the only reason why this, your, your son is hanging around with this person who's also a bully is because they are actually looking to fill a void at the moment. There's a void going on in their own self-worth and they see that being filled by that other person because they don't want to feel left out. Look, no, no kid, no adult, nobody wants to feel left out. We all want to belong. We want to be part of something, right? So, so I would say make sure that you get your son some personal development, which I know you're into yourself. Like get work with him on himself and definitely get him to stay away from this person. Look, this person... It doesn't matter. You can try and change this person all you want, but that's not your job or your son's job. That's their parents' job. It's got nothing to do with you. you clearly, you can, you can talk to their parents as well about this, but don't have your son go anywhere near this person anymore. Teach them some more functional skills to handle people like that. Teach him to be a better communicator so then he can manage that relationship. So once he's got the skills, now he can go back to this person and say, hey, I'm not tolerating your nonsense anymore and I'm not gonna be a doormat for you. So if you wanna walk over someone, go and find someone else because you're not gonna find a doormat here. Like, teach your son a better way of dealing with this. I'm not asking them to run away from conflict. That's not what I'm asking them to do. I'm asking you to, to train your son to have better coping mechanisms for himself and better communication skills to be able to articulate himself better and get out of these situations. Because at the end of the day, that's not a functional situation for him to be in. So I hope that helps. I mean, that's the best I can do in the time that I've got. But clearly, you know, if I see you at some point, I'm happily, happily talk to you about this in, in a lot more detail, okay? Um, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie. Carrie's actually one of my Academy members who just won an award. She just won an award, um, I think it's for a most improved member, right? Um, so, so congratulations, Carrie. Carrie, you're an amazing person, an amazing vocalist and artist and singer as well, um, who just sang All I Want For Christmas. 
at our Christmas party and awards evening, so, which was phenomenal. Great, great, great. So anyway, enough about that. Quick question from you. Cancellations. So your client's cancelling on you. Um, the other teacher lets me pay weekly. So um, Carrie, for those of you who don't know, does vocal coaching and, and she trains people up. Um, I'm guessing you're meaning there are people who pay weekly for the lessons and you don't charge weekly. I think you charge in blocks, right? Monthly blocks or session blocks. Well, here's the thing. Anyone who says my other teacher or the other teacher lets me pay weekly, they're not your client, plain and simple. This is not your terms. You're not doing business like anybody else. What somebody else does has got nothing to do with you. So stick to your guns. If that person's insisting on paying weekly, whose business is it? It's yours. It's not anybody else's business. So don't take that. That's, that's not cool. If that's not your terms, it's not your terms, right? And if you do take that, it's because you're coming from a place of scarcity, not abundance. That's all. So I would say sack the person if they're not willing to stick to your terms and conditions. Plain and simple. Go and find the people that appreciate your value and know your worth and let them do business with you on your terms. Okay? Good. Hope that answers your question. Um, Royston, now that I've done Elite, what's the best strategy for me to get a maximum return on investment in the next 12 months? Right. So just to put it in perspective, if you're watching this and you're going, what's Elite? What's Royston talking about? So um, this is a, 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 a speaker training program run by a good friend of mine and mentor of mine. Andy Harrington, and uh, it's a seven-day intensive retreat almost with Andy where he deep dives into your, your speak, speaking skills. Um, and Royston's been on that program and he now wants to know what's the best strategy to get his ROI on that. Very simple, apply what you've learned. I'm not gonna dress it up. Take what you've learned, that's exactly what I did with Andy as well in his training. I learned from the man, you know, and I implemented it and I've got massive results and massive success, you know, sharing the stages with some of these big names all across the world and, and running events and running my own successful training company as a result of that. And yeah, look, I can't count how many bloody times I've got my return on investment from working with Andy already. So, you know, and that only happened because I applied it. So put your events on, serve people, make them an offer, add value and you will start to gain momentum very very soon my friend so don't give up all right just keep on doing it uh yulita you have a question around i wish to learn about proven steps on how to get into the right circle of connection and be seen as an expert when you st when you're still in the middle of the road do you have any tested methods okay i'm, I'm interpreting this question as how do you get seen as an expert when perhaps you don't have enough credibility yet I'm guessing that's what you mean. The best way around it is to understand that you are miles ahead of the person who hasn't started yet. There are people at the moment who are actually at the beginning of their journeys, and maybe you're not at the end destination yet of yours, but you're further ahead than them. So, so if you're here and, and they're over there, by the time you train them to get them to here, you would have moved on a bit more. And by the time that you've moved on a bit more, you'll train them to get them to here, and then you move on some more, and you just have these people grow with you. So this, look, if, you, if you're struggling right now with perceived value in the marketplace, maybe you don't think that you're good enough or credible enough or whatever it is, then all I'm gonna say is, understand that you've gotta start somewhere. There is nothing wrong with you going out there and networking and, and, and presenting yourself to the right people and talking to the right people. So maybe you might not be working with people who are more successful than you at the moment because you don't feel you have enough credibility, but I bet you're more successful than somebody else. Maybe you, you've got some results from something that somebody else hasn't got and they'll be willing to pay you for that. So, so understand that you are an expert already. You're great at what you do and you don't need permission from anybody else to believe that. All you need to do is go out and resonate on that level, vibrate, should I say, on that frequency and you'll start to attract the right people into your business, okay? Um, Angelina, how to get more new clients uh, and more money into my bank account, <laughs> even though it's a very tough uh, period of my life um, whilst keeping the energy good. Um, this is relating to uh, a state. This is all to do with state and again, I just did a video on this recently actually regarding sales, how to, how to get more sales and it's all to do with state management. So if you see that video, watch it, yeah? Um, but here's, here's my quick tip for you. Come from a place of abundance, not scarcity. Like you've got to detach yourself emotionally from the outcome because if you're resonating or vibrating with a, a sense of need and desperation, you're actually going to repel people. You don't want to be repelling people, you want to be attracting them, right? So do your best to ensure that you're, you, when you go into a sales conversation, 
come from a place of abundance almost become ignorant to the outcome like delete the outcome as if like you know what whether this person buys on me or not from not is irrelevant i want them to buy from me but i don't need them to and i know that's hard to do when you need the money i know it's very very hard to do but you're actually not helping yourself coming from the state that you're coming in at the moment coming from at the moment so if you're going to yourself well jess and that's tough i don't know whether i can do that well let me ask you this what's the alternative continue doing what you're doing right now because that's clearly not serving you it's clearly not working right so my advice is change that don't change the goal change the strategy your strategy just like i gave nisha that advice at the beginning of the video change the strategy the strategy at the moment is you're good at what you do in fact you're great at what you do you, you have amazing products, you have an amazing gift and talent to serve other people, but you're repelling the people that want help from you because you're coming across too desperate and too needy. And that, that is actually coming out, whether you know it or not, it's coming out through your subconscious and it's coming out in your sales conversation and you're not gonna attract anything that you want. Because look, you attract what you put out. And if right now you're attracting or putting out a need and scarcity, you're gonna attract people who are of similar nature and you're going to attract people who don't want to spend. You're going to you're not going to you're not going to attract abundant people who are happy to spend. You're going to find people who are who are coming from a place of scarcity and don't like spending. It's what you're attracting. So change your frequency. Start coming from a place of abundance. Detach yourself from the outcome. And believe me, your sales will start to pour in. I promise you that. So please give that a try. Please give that a try. Okay. Uh, last few questions. Um, Steve Palmer. Steve, how you doing, my man? Um, hitting the wall, you know there is no, there is so much to do and you should be doing, but you seek distraction just to justify not doing it. Well, here's the thing. Stop it. <laughs> That's as simple as that. If you know there are things you should be doing, then perhaps there's a, we have to look at what you're distracting for. Like what, what are your reasons behind procrastinating? What's the real reason behind that? Is it something hard? Is it something painful? Is it something boring? Because look, if it's something boring that you don't like doing, then get someone else to do it. Outsource it. Like, this seriously, like it's wasting your time. Just give it to someone else. If it's something that's like you can do and you need to do because you don't have anybody else to do it, but it's a bit hard or it's a bit time consuming, then you're gonna have to do this. My advice is block out some time and put it in your diary to do that thing. Switch off all your distractions, no notifications, turn off the internet if you have to turn off the bloody internet and just focus on that one thing and do it first thing in the morning. Get it out of the way. There's a great book I recommend you read called um, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy, Eat That Frog. If you haven't read it, read it, great book. It will give you all the tips you need to, to, to get away from all this, this distraction and all this kind of stuff. So um, just, just stop distracting yourself. Get rid of the notifications and all that kind of stuff and make it a, a must, make it a priority to get this stuff done or outsource it if you can do that, all right? Um, Neil, honest answer, dealing with depression whilst trying to build a business. There, there you go, pick the bones out of that one. Great question and great challenge. I don't need to pick any bones, my friend. There's no bones to be picked. You are choosing to be how you are at the moment. Let me explain what I mean. There's a difference between depression and feeling low. They're two different things. People get this confused all the time. They say, I'm depressed, I'm down, I'm depressed. I'm... No, you're, 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 maybe you're low. Because real depression means you don't wanna get out of bed in the morning. You're not eating properly. Your, your relationships are breaking down. You don't wanna to talk to anyone. You don't even wanna go out your house. You don't even get dressed. Like my advice to you is if, if you are having any of those symptoms, then definitely get some help for that. And I'm not talking about just going to see a doctor. I'm not asking you to do that. I, I believe it's a state of mind and you can change that. I'd advise you to go and find yourself a good NLP practitioner. And in fact, come, and, come to me, message me, and I'll put you in touch with some really cool people who can help you out, people that I personally recommend myself. Like, now look, I, I'm an NLP practitioner myself, but I don't run a, run a practice around it. I use NLP for my own business needs and my, my, my personal and professional development needs for my clients. I don't run a practice as it were, but I will definitely put you in touch with the right people to get some help with that brother if those are the things that you're going through at the moment. But if you're not getting those kind of serious symptoms, then chances are you're just feeling low and that's the state. And that's because you've gone into a spiral of some sort and you're focusing on something bad, focusing on something wrong. So my advice is focus on the things you want. What do you want instead? 
Focus on that because you get what you focus on. And if right now you're focusing on being low, feeling down, business isn't working, not getting enough clients, you're gonna get more of that. Just like I said to Angelina just now, like literally you're, you're attracting that stuff into your life. So my advice is please have a good look at what symptoms you're facing. If there are some serious symptoms, reach out to me, I'll get you some help and we'll get you sorted out so you can move on, right? And I'm not talking about drugs here, okay? If it's not, ask yourself a serious question. Like, can I get out of this? Because if it's possible, it will. And more importantly, who depends on you right now, my man? Your family, right? You've got your wife, you've got your kids, you've got your family, they depend on you, right? You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. You've done that already, clearly. Experience it, now it's time to move on. And this is me as a friend telling you, move on. It's time to move on, my man, because you've done it before and you can do it again. I know you've had phenomenal results in your business when you've been focusing on the right thing. So get out there and focus on your marketing, focusing on nurturing those leads, focus on closing those deals, and do what you do best, my man, and that is to serve people with your amazing products and services. So, so focus on that. But send a message to me and let me know how you're feeling after you've watched this video, okay? Um, last couple of um, questions. Uh, Fabio, uh, Fabio, another one of my Academy members who's an award winner. Yes, 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 he won an award very, very recently at our Business and Marketing Academy Awards. So well done to you, best content creator actually. Um, so you, I mean, you're, you're afraid that you still have issues with your attitude and determination. Uh, you're pretty confident you can build any practical skill set, but you still need to craft that perfect mindset. So my advice is to look, work on yourself every single day. Get like you've done this before, and I'm going to share it with everybody else actually, so they can do that. I want you to write the list of all the limiting beliefs and crappy shit that goes on in your head, and then write, write literally like I'm not good enough, I don't have enough skills, I don't have enough money, whatever it is. Write out all the crap that you're going through your head, and then write a more positive statement next to it instead. What's the more positive frame of? of so, for example, I don't have enough money. I'm a money magnet. I don't have the, the right skill set. I can learn anything that I need to learn. Whatever it is, I don't have the right support, I can lean on my mentor. What, whatever it is, write down your more positively framed statements and read them morning, noon, and night. Literally, read them in the morning, read them at lunchtime, and read them at nighttime. Just do that for 21 days straight, they'll start to become part of you, right? Because you've got to start shifting how you talk to yourself. It's that inner, inner voice that's making you think like this at the moment, brother. So, so have a think about that. Um, Karima, managing anxiety. Again, it's a state. You perhaps need to get some help with that because at the end of the day, your focus is on, you're focusing on things that are making you anxious because I bet you're not anxious 24 seven. I'm willing to bet you are not anxious 24 seven. Like if you're doing something that you love and you're having fun, you're distracted temporarily. So you're not able to do the anxiety thing at that point, right? So start doing more of the things that make you happy. Change your environment, shift your state around you, change the people that you hang around. Maybe right now you're in a situation where you're hanging around some people that bring you down, I don't know. But reach out and get some help from some people, right? Again, if you want some help with, with that, you know, from an NLP perspective, reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with some people that can help get rid of that anxiety as if it was never there, right? So, so please, please, please focus on something different and it will alleviate you of this anxiety, okay? Um, Huda, your last question, my lovely Huda. Uh, focus, same as I told Steve and Adele earlier on. Look at all of the things that you need to do. What's the one thing that's gonna bring you the biggest result? Block some time off in your diary and just make it happen. Just chip away. Look, it's better to do one thing at a time than trying to do many things. And look, I would rather do, I can get more done in two hours of focused time than trying to do eight hours worth of work. So my advice is focus on the one thing that's gonna give you the biggest result and start to chip away at it. And then ask yourself, how great will it feel once that's done, right? I'm sure you will agree, you will feel amazing for doing that. So those are the questions. I'm very grateful that you guys reached out to me to answer these questions for you in this long video, but worth it. And I hope you found value in all of the answers, everyone who asked me a question. And if you're watching this right now and you got any value from any of the questions that I answered for other people, then please comment below, let me know your thoughts, like this video on whatever platform that you're liking it on, um, share it, subscribe to it. Just, just follow me, follow me and ask me any questions as well. Because look, if you ask me enough questions, I may do another video like this and get it out so that you guys can get the answers to your questions because I'm here to serve you at the end of the day. So once again, this is Jess and James, founder of the Business and Marketing School. Thank you so much 
for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Take care.